Hello everyone, it's uh, Kevin here again, and this week we're going to be covering a couple pretty important items. So, this is the app that we're going to build. It's uh, basically an application where we can go and view some items that we would store in, uh, in any sort of storage system, whether it's local storage, whether it's a database, whether anything, right? Accessing an API, and that API makes a call to a database. So, if we look here, we have some values here. We modify some of those values, update the item, there we go, everything goes back. Add a couple items, a couple values, I mean, here, update them, and it persists. So, why is this important? It's because we're moving between different classes here. So, if this was on the same page, yeah, you would store it in a variable and you would just reference that same variable throughout, the, uh, throughout that class, but we're not. We're accessing this across uh, several, several classes. So, because of that, we, we need some level of persistence. Now, the way that this is handled, the way that I handled it for this semester, not the semester, but for this uh, this lecture is, it's a very, it's, it's not a good way of handling it. So basically, I, I create a variable that we can access globally. That, that's typically not good. We don't, we don't want to do things that way. We want to have some, some level of persistence. So for example, we might want to have some local storage that we would access. Uh, local storage is just storage that's on the device, and it's it only stays on that device and it's typically just key value pairs uh, we have another option and it's shared sh shared something sh shared preferences I believe and that's for primitive type storage so you might be storing a primitive field so like an integer uh, a double a string although string technically I guess isn't really a, a primitive but in this case we would treat it as a primitive at least with that uh, with that shared the shared preferences stuff but those have their limitations uh, the biggest one is uh, serialization and deserialization we can do that uh, so so again we're gonna get more into the serialization and deserialization later in the semester uh, but in a nutshell it's basically where you have an object so say we have some object item which we'll be creating here soon and uh, in this item has some properties ID uh, name and description yeah it'll actually be an integer when we work on this getting ahead of myself there so we would take this and we would convert this to a string that we can that we can pass between networks and that we, we can store and then, of course, with serialization comes deserialization. So now we take that string and we convert it into the object that it originally represented. And this, this is a, it's, it's super common in .NET. So if you're working in uh, the, the whole Microsoft ecosystem, it's super common there. Uh, but here in Flutter, not quite as common. It's still used. It's just there, things are handled a little bit differently. Uh, but I digress. So that it, it gets too complicated with. Uh, with those other item, with those other uh, methods. So, what I'm going to be doing is, is, like I said, I'm just going to have a global variable or a global list that we'll be able to access throughout the whole application. So, we're going to cover that, uh, and those principles will, will carry over to development with other with other systems. And uh, we'll also be covering navigation, so how we can move between one page and another. And honestly, those those are the biggest things: navigation and accessing variables. Throughout, throughout the entire application, but those will be huge for the rest of the semester. These are going to be big items. So, what we're going to start off with is we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So, go in here, create a new project. Now that that's created, we'll go right into here. I, I probably should have called it lecture. I didn't. So here we go. Start off with our boilerplate here. And I'll get rid of all this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and pause so that you all don't have to see this. Okay, so now that this is all cleaned up, uh, I just remember. I just remembered that we're going to be covering one more item. We're also going to be covering passing data between 
these uh, these separate pages. That's pretty big as well, but just something I thought of while I was cleaning this all this stuff up. So we're gonna go ahead and start the application here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and debug, run and debug here. Just to kind of get us a, a baseline here. And uh, I'll just be right back so you guys don't have to watch this. And here we are with the application running. Click the button here and it'll increment the counter. So, where do we start? Let's start with the data persistence. So, to start, we're going to want to start organizing some of our stuff here. So, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder in here inside of the lib. How did I do that? I right clicked on lib right there. Notice how I did that. Right click on lib, new folder. What we're going to do is we're going to create a models folder. Again, I, th I think I might have mentioned this already. If I say folder or if I say directory, they're synonymous. They're the same thing. Just uh, don't want anyone to be confused there. So folder, directory, think of them as the same thing. If we right, uh, right click on here and again create a new folder, we can create the views folder. So models is going to uh, contain our models. Views is going to contain our views. Pretty straightforward. In here, we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call it item.dart. Item.dart is just going to be a class. It's going to be called item. And it's going to have a, it's going to have an integer uh, ID. String name and string description. In addition to this, we're going to want a constructor. So we run into the whole deal of do we initialize or do we not initialize? It's, I guess it depends on whether you want the stuff initialized or not. Uh, sometimes it'll give you compiler warning depending on where it's created and how you have that constructor set up. Right for now we're not going to worry about it. If we have to worry about it, we're going to worry about it. No issues here so far though. Next what we're going to do is we're going to create our global items class. So we're going to go ahead and clear, uh, call this global items dot dart and we're going to import uh, the item dot dart. So this is going to be pretty big too, uh, how we import stuff. So when we import we're going to have several options. We're going to be able to import as a package and we're going to be able to do a relative import. So by relative import I mean that we can and do something like this dot slash something right something in the, in the same directory dot dot slash something in another directory outside of this one so this the dot dot means get out of the current directory and uh, look higher up that file tree if we do dot 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 slash we're gonna have even more access but in this case it would be access so okay we leave here we're gonna have access to everything inside of lib outside of that there's nothing we're gonna want to access so there's that wouldn't even make sense in this case, but that's how you would do it. So if you had a folder inside of models and another folder inside of that folder, you could move back and forth between folders uh, with that relative pathing. The reason we want to use the relative pathing is because if we use packages, it becomes a problem when you want to share your code with someone else and have them run your run your code. It ends up not being able to, it doesn't work right. Whereas if you do relative pathing, it's just, it's relative to the whole project, which is perfect because you don't need any of the other person's operating system stuff so like C users uh, my username right if that's not the same on the other person's machine it's not gonna work items like those so we want them to work on anyone's machine so we're going to have them be relative in this case it doesn't really matter because it's we're in this we're inside the same directory but it's worth bringing up so we're gonna define global items And we're going to have a static final uh, instance here. You'll see what I mean. It actually, 
we don't want to do this quite yet. We wanted to find the inst the uh, this method that we're going to be calling because this is going to throw an error. So we're going to do global items dot instance. And that's one definition right there. Then in here, we're going to reference it. And then we're going to create a factory here. So how is this relevant? This here is what we're going to be accessing throughout the entire application. So we're going to be referencing items here. And I'm, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. I said that wrong. We're going to be access, we're going to be accessing items, but we're not going to be accessing this private item here. So instead of that, we're going to just create the items that we will be accessing. So it's a, it's going to be a list of type item. Apologize for that. And we're just going to set that to an empty list. So this is what we're going to be accessing. This is all the other code that we need to be able to access this throughout the rest of the application. So with that being said, now we have our data persistence, if you want to call it that. It's not actually a data persistence structure because if the application dies, if it crashes, if anything happens, this data is all going to go away because it's stored in memory, random access memory. So not a good solution, but it as, as you'll see, it'll be a good representation of what accessing data throughout the application is going to look like. So we're not going to want this here floating action button, so we're going to get rid of that as well. Oops, want to keep that for formatting. And this here text, this text widget, we're going to want to get rid of. We're not going to reference counter anymore. Don't worry about the constant stuff here. It won't be constant in a little bit. We won't run into that where we have to access that. Um, I want to cause this to break. There we go. So here we go. Here is our first page. So it's pretty pretty bare bones. We can't really do anything here. So we're going to want to add a little bit more stuff to this. First off, let's change the let's change the title to week six. That's updated now. Next, we're going to want, we're not going to set any of the stuff up related to item quite yet. We're just going to get some page navigation sorted out. Or actually, you know, I think it might be better to set up the item because we're going to need to pass that to the next page. Without that, we're not going to be able to even do anything with the next page. So I'll just create an item here. So we have our title defined there. We don't want to actually work in there. We want to work right here inside of this class. So item, I create a new item here. It actually, not remembering the constructor, it's it takes an ID, an ID, an integer ID, then a name. So we'll just call this again, just like the other one. And again, if you're wondering what what my deal is with Doge, Dogecoin, Benji, all these all these variable names or all these items that you see. Uh, before I get into that tangent actually, let's go ahead and fix this. We just need to bring in the reference. Uh, again, back to that whole reference, the whole references deal. You're gonna see this here package. We don't want the package, we want the library right here. So if we look up, notice. Now you'll see these packages and that's a little different because it's a flutter. It's a flutter package. It's something that already exists within this project, but these file imports we want to have that way. So, like I was saying though, what's the deal with Doge, Dogecoin, Doget? I, uh, I have two puppies. Well, not puppies anymore, but I have two dogs. One's Benji, one's Euler. They're just uh, they're Yorkshire Terrier mixes with uh, with Poodle. And um, yeah, Benji and Euler, and their last name is Doget. So that's where all that comes from. And then Doge and Dogecoin. I just love the photo of that Shiba Inu Doge. Some people that uh, have been submitting assignments it's calling it do Doggy or do it's it's Doge. You can call it whatever you want, I don't care, but it's typically how it's pronounced Doge. And then Dogecoin is just a, it's a meme coin, a meme coin, cryptocurrency meme coin. Some of you guys might get that references, some might not. Look it up 
if you want to. So now that we have this, and now that my tangent's over, we're going to reference this here. So we're going to have a couple text widgets. We already have one here. And it, instead of those text widgets, actually, let's work on our alignment. So this is already inside of a center. That center will center the uh, contents within the screen. <clears throat> In addition to this, we're going to want to move this all this stuff up. So we're going to go ahead and move this up by doing start, main access alignment dot start. And let's let's just go ahead and wrap this with some padding. So the reason I want to wrap this with some padding is because it looks like it's almost touching the top here. Don't really want that. Looks kind of ugly. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on here and I'll select refactor and then I'll select padding. That's going to fill in a whole bunch of cool information here. We're not going to have to do a whole lot. All we got to do is just click save or control S. There we go, that gave us a little bit more uh, padding there. And it's all around, as it says, edge insets dot all, eight pixels all around. So now that we have that created, we're gonna start working on our text boxes here. Text boxes, text widgets is the correct name. This isn't, uh, this isn't WPF or, what's that other one, WinForms. That's the antiquated, ver the antiquated Windows development stuff, yeah. So, first we're going to have, uh, real quick, just uh, a big one to say, it's item information. There it is. This is kind of ugly though, because it's so small, it's kind of hard to read. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a style. And the style is going to take in a text style widget. And we're going to pass in the font size. We're going to have it set to 30 point. 30 pixels, 30 point, whatever it takes in. And then we're going to set the font weight to bold. And it's just essentially a constant. Now that that's set, we got our item information stuff right there. Gonna add a couple of trailing commas just to make it a little bit better looking. And since it's so, since it's so repetitive, we'll, we'll just reuse this. I'm just gonna copy this. Make sure that if you do copy this, if you're following along, you uh, include this comma. If you don't include the comma, it's you're gonna have to add it in later. So might as well just include it with the first time. So I'm gonna do that one time and one more. And then one more, because it's three properties. So first we're going to have our item ID. And we're going to do a little bit of st uh, string interpolation, but before we do that, we're going to want to get rid of some of this here stuff. And in hindsight, it probably would have been a little bit better to uh, just do this, this one right here and paste it twice again, but not a big deal. You could probably do that right now if you're following along. And we're going to change these to 20 point. That looks a little bit better. We could, we could do better, but for now, it looks good enough. We're going to do our string interpolation. So item.id. This one's going to go in here. Item name. and our item description. And here we go. We have some of our, finally we have some fields here that we can display. They're semi-accurate. So, I don't even know why I said semi. They, they are accurate. They're exactly what is contained inside of these little properties of item. So, in addition to this, we're gonna have one button, an elevated button. The elevated button is going to call a method. But for now, we're just going to have it be null. Child is going to be a text widget. And this text is just going to say edit item. Or let me see at the, uh, yeah, that's what I had on the other one. We're going to define a method handle button press.
and in here we're going to set the state. We're not going to do a whole lot in there quite yet though. We're going to add it here. There we go, this is filled in now. And here's where things start getting a little bit interesting. So we have either the option to create the new page or we can handle our uh, getting, I wonder if that's even the right word, but fetching of the values, right? Because right now this stuff is just, this is just stuff that we defined in code. And yeah, we're gonna, it's, it's still gonna be stuff that we defined in code later on, but the point of this is kind of the persistence, being able to grab something from quote unquote a database from sort some sort of per, uh, persistence system. So, in reality here, this isn't what we're gonna do. Uh, we're we're gonna keep this in case that first item is null, and just to initialize something here. But this isn't actually what's um, it's gonna be done. So, inside of our handle button press, we're gonna be. And we're going to be adding our logic to move to the next page. And I guess in order to do that, we're going to have to create our next page. So inside of our views, we're going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this edit item page. And I think that maybe the lowercase might be a little better. There we go. So now that we're here we're gonna want to uh, there's a little trick so ba you use the uh, IntelliSense or whatever you call it to help you generate the code here so we're just gonna do STF for stateful widget if this doesn't show up and you're this far I don't know how you've been doing it, it sucks if you don't have all these all this tooling but if you don't you gotta go through your configuration figure out why your tooling isn't working uh, make sure that all your flutter stuff is installed uh, but if it is, you just hit that, hit tab. So STF and then tab right away. We're gonna call this edit item page and save it. We just created a page. That's how simple it is to create a new class, a new play page class, but page nonetheless. So we're gonna wanna reference our item in here right away. So to do that, we're gonna create a final item. And this item, we need to uh, add that reference so that way the compiler knows where to get all the stuff from relative pathing here. We're going to run into a small constructor issue because item isn't inside of that constructor. So what we're going to do is we're f first we're going to make key nullable. So we're going to call it key and that's nullable and then we're going to have a required parameter. Now let's see if we really need that this qualifier. Yeah, we do. Keep that in place right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna add this here in case we don't have that item coming in. We're gonna do this. There we go, just to avoid any issues later on. Inside of our override, this here is create state function. We're going to pass the item in. It's going to give us an error right away. It should. Yeah, there it is. But that's not a big deal because we can handle that down here. So now, there's a couple classes here. Or not a couple, two classes here, but just <clears throat> make sure you're in the right one because if you're not, it's going to, it's going to lead to issues. So what I'm referencing is this right here. <coughs> Apologize for clearing my throat there. And we're just gonna have the reference to item there. Now that we did that, we're gonna want the item throughout the, the rest of the page. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to use the, key, the, the keyword late. And I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. This is typically how you access a value from the widget and in order to be able to do that in this case we're gonna have to use late so just just so that you're aware 
everything looks good so far though so this we've been saving it should if you've been saving you've been you, I don't know if you saw that hot reload down there all the logic should be up to date but we hit the button nothing happens why because we don't have any logic to actually move to this page so what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna move to that page here and this is where the navigation really comes into play so we're gonna do a navigator dot push before I get super deep into the weeds here though you might see some instances where people do navigator dot pop first So what's pop? All pop is, and it gives you the documentation right here, but it just gets rid of the top most item on the uh, page modal stack. Some people do that and then they create a new, uh, they push a new page. I don't like to do that. I like to keep it if I can, instead of creating and deleting stuff from memory, I like to keep it, especially if it has rele rele relevant info that we're just gonna wanna reload. Uh, there might be an instance where you want to create it and delete it as you go but if you think about it like let's let's think Spotify for example I'm actually gonna open up the Spotify app right now on my phone so if you go to Spotify at least as of right now as of this video you, you go to your home page I'm on an iPhone by the way uh, Spotify premium and if you if you look you're gonna have some music there that you can that you can get to now if you go and click into say I'm just scrolling here something that I've been listening to already click into that it's gonna show some information it's probably gonna go make an API call to get that information if you don't have Spotify use Facebook use snapchat Instagram whatever whatever application you want to use that makes API calls that connects to the internet use that and click on something click on an element and then go back the stuff doesn't really change nothing nothing should really be changing there so if you so if you think about it if you go and create the stuff so by creating, I mean you go and make that API call and then assign a whole bunch of stuff on screen to the value that came back from that API call. And then you go and click on another item on screen, presumably something that came from that API call, and you go and get the detail stuff for that API call item. If you go and delete all that stuff from that API call, that means that when you go back to that original page, you're going to have to go and make another API call to get more stuff. If you think about the server, you're going to be pounding on that server because it's not one user, not two users, not 10, not 100, not 1,000. It's going to be a lot of users. It's hundreds of thousands, millions, hundreds of millions. Uh, so we want to limit our API calls. If we can reuse information, we might as well. It's, it's not only good for that. I mean, if you're reading and writing to memory, it can be... I'm not going to see it's slow because reading and writing to memory isn't, isn't really slow nowadays with uh, solid state drives. But we can keep the, the stuff in memory and reuse it later on again it's it's better to do that but now that I got done with that tangent though we're just gonna be pushing a new route we're gonna be pushing a new page I'm sorry on top of this one so the page that we're gonna push is the uh, edit item page uh, we're gonna reference it by its class name but in order to do this we need to pass in the context so if we hover over this it's gonna take in a couple items here it's gonna take a context it's gonna take a then it's going to have a material page route of some type T. Uh, we're not going to define that type T in this case. And it says a type void uh, here in the documentation. But then we're going to have some other information. So a builder. We're going to have to define the builder. Uh, or, or include a reference to, of, of a builder that already exists. So this here context is shared throughout the application. So if you really look into it, if you read the stuff inside of the book, that context gets passed throughout the application. That's always... It's always there so and then of course the place that we're going to in this case edit item page so we're gonna have that context parameter now it's already gonna do this uh, formatting for me after I define some more of the stuff but I'll just do it anyways here we're gonna do a material page route the builder is gonna be set to context And we're just going to have a lambda here. And we're not going to want... Hope you didn't copy me there. We're not going to want that. And then we're going to want the edit item page. We're going to have to add the reference, of course. Because it's not going to know what edit item page. So it kind of knows, right? So it, when we did this here, I don't know if you noticed. When we did edit item page. It knows, right? And it says auto import from so on and so forth, but... 
uh, that's just one of the nice little features of uh, working with uh, VS Code here in Dart. We're going to go ahead and add that reference. And this is going to take something in. And it'll tell you too. It's, it says right here, name parameter item is required. There's no corresponding argument. So, the, I mean, typically, this is, I'm going to hop on a tangent here again. If you are working on an application and you get a little issue here, so for example, this red squiggle, say there's, there's something going on, the compiler, or maybe not the compiler, but IntelliSense noticed that something's up. And it tells you right there. Usually it'll tell you exactly what's wrong. And if, if, and if it doesn't tell you what's wrong, it'll give you a pretty good idea of what could be wrong. That extends to error messages. So there is this, there is this great book called The Pragmatic Programmer. And I definitely suggest that if, you, you know, if you're a student, of course, at SETCC, I know that these videos are public. Uh, but if you are a student taking this course and you're watching this, The prag uh, Pragmatic Programmer, phenomenal book. And that's the difference between a good developer and a bad developer. I know I say that sometimes, but it really is. The developers that go out and read additional content outside of school, the ones that are working on side projects, the ones that are getting their abilities, they're, they're moving their abilities to the next level, those are the ones that end up getting the promotions. They're the, they're the ones that end up getting hired. They're the ones that end up getting picked from, from other ca candidates. So, back, I guess back to the whole pragmatic programmer, if you get a chance, you should read it. It's a really good book kind of gives you an idea of how code can be maintained, uh, structures that you can use in code that are efficient, uh, debugging, bug fixes, all kinds of stuff like that. It's really, really, really useful. It teaches you a whole bunch of stuff. So now that that's over though, we're going to define, or we're not going to define, we're just going to pass in the parameters. So we're telling it what it is, so item, and that's exactly, if we F12 into this, it's exactly what it takes in, an item. And we're just going to say, hey, we're going to pass an item, which we've defined up here. Whoops, went a little too far. Right up here. So let's see what happens if we click this button. If we click it, nothing happens. Well, so, so obviously something happened, but nothing gets displayed, and that's because we haven't set anything here. So we're going to want to go back to our uh, edit item page, and we're going to we're going to want to add some stuff here just so that we can. We can get some stuff to the user, really some info to the user. So first, we're going to have a container. We're going to return a container. This container is going to have a child of scaffold. The scaffold is going to have an app bar. It's going to be an app bar widget. This app bar widget is going to take it a background color. And we, we have that defined in code up here. So in that main.dart page. So we're just going to do theme.of context. Again, that's where that useful context that we passed in, that's that's what that's for. So we can we can have that shared throughout the application. So, so theme.of context dot color scheme dot inverse primary, which is what we used in the other one. We have a little issue here. There we go. Save that. And cool. Now we have the we have kind of like the base foundation here. So if we click at an item, we can move back and forth. Of course, we want to have a little bit more than this. So to the scaffold, of course, it's going to want to have the body. So we're going to set our body here, and it's just going to be a center. Why a center? Sounds pretty self-explanatory, but we want to center the stuff on the screen. If we don't use a center, it'll be left aligned. So this center is going to take in a child of column, which is going to have children. And before we set the children, then we're going to set our alignment. So main axis alignment, just so that we can get all the stuff to be up here. Main axis alignment dot start. There we go. So now that we have that, we're going to want to set our children here. Okay, just want to make sure I'm doing everything right here. Okay, 
It's right in here. There we go. Type widget. There's no stateful stuff in here yet, so it's going to give us that, that const deal. Don't worry about it quite yet. And in here, we're going to want to have a couple text fields. Here's our text fields, three text fields, and actually we don't, we don't want three wheel, we want two. That's my mistake. There we go. And then we're going to want to have a button here. That button is just going to be set to null here, and the child of text is going to be update item. Set our trailing commas for auto formatting here. So that's pretty neat, but we don't have any stuff coming in into here. So we're gonna want to start working on that. <clears throat> I could work on the on some of the help text here, label text. I'll just wait on that till we get some of the data over to the that other uh, to this other page here, the one that we're in actually, I suppose. So if we go back into here we're gonna wanna add a little bit more logic so we created our item it's a new item here however we're gonna wanna have a little bit of extra logic just to uh, just to handle I don't wanna call them edge cases but to handle what happens when we come back so remember how I said that the uh, pop will remove that from memory we don't we don't want that at least not in here we want that in the other page because we're going to be updating some stuff inside of global items, but not in here because we're going to have to go and recreate stuff again. So with this push, though, comes a pretty neat uh, function that we can call dot then. It's not that one. Right here. So this dot then basically is what happens after this is done. So after they come back, as it states, then what happens? And this is just going to take in a value. Oh, whoops. We're, we're, it's, I shouldn't say take in a value. It's, uh, it's an anonymous function, so a non-named function. It's going to do some stuff. We're not going to use value, but it wants that value to be there. So in here, we're going to do a set state. Sometimes when you're doing set states instead of set states or logic like this, it can be a little finicky where it doesn't want to do that autocomplete. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it looks like we have a little issue here. There we go. Make it happy. So in this set state, we're going to fire off some logic. And if this doesn't throw an error, we'll just keep that the way that it is. Because we're not going to do any logic in there quite yet. So let's kind of think of what the uh, whole... Because I know it's just, just been a whole lot of watching me code and not really following what's going on here yet. So what we want to do here is we want to initialize this, this here uh, item object, which we do. Once we initialize it, we want to send that off to the uh, to that edit item, that edit item page. Once that gets modified in there, though, we're going to want to we're going to want to modify we're going to want to modify the actual value that we're storing, and then we're going to want to take that modified value and update the values on the screen on that original page. So, I'm actually, going to pause here just to cover some stuff quick. Okay, I found a little thing that. <clears throat> I need to handle just an edge case in the code elsewhere uh, in the other code base that I wrote first. So what we want to do here right away is inside of this handle button press is we want to have a condition. So if and here's where we're gonna where we're gonna start accessing global items. If not global items, 
we're going to want to add that reference. If not, global items dot items, which remember, if we have 12 and 2 global items, we're referencing this here, variable items. So if not, global items dot items dot contains, and the element is going to be I. We're just going to name it I. We, we can name it index. We can name it whatever we want. Honestly, that's probably a better name. That way we know exactly what I is. And we're just going to check to see if index.id is equal to item.id. Oh, looks like I'm missing a parenthesis there. There we go. So if index.id is equal to item.id, you want to add that other parenthesis. If, if it doesn't, basically. So since we added this here, not operator. So if it does not contain essentials what we're saying if, if it does not contain the index that uh, that we defined up here in code which is one we're gonna want to add it so let's add that right here we're gonna do global items remember to do the uh, the parentheses around there or else it's not gonna work dot items dot add we're gonna add the item to the list of items and we can break through this kind of to go through what exactly it's doing here. Set some breakpoints inside of here to see how it's being accessed. So if it's not, we want to push that route. I'm sorry, if, if it's not inside of here, we want to add the item. And then we want to push it out. If it is though, and let's think about that case where if it is. If it is, that means that it's already been it's already been added, so we don't need to do this again. So in this case at this point of the application we haven't we haven't added anything quite yet so if we go and select added item in here we're gonna check global items dot items dot contains the index which is it's, it's gonna loop through all of them and if the index dot ID which is think about think about this as like a for each so if that index dot ID is equal to the item dot ID which is one uh, then it's true which in this case wouldn't be good because that means that we would have already added the item so we're gonna step into here and it looks like it's gonna go ahead and add it and there's some of our values and if we look in here we might have maybe maybe not nah, I guess not it's gonna it's not gonna let us see the value of items in there then we're gonna push the uh, item to the next page Go ahead and do that. And nothing changed here, of course, because we we're not actually using it. So we can add some logic in here to uh, print it. I'm not going to because we already already know it's there. Let's see if that it even lets us do that. I guess I've never tried that. That's not going to let us do that. That way you can just see whether or not item got passed over. But we'll we'll be referencing it and if. If it's not passed in, it'll be pretty obvious. So, if we go ahead and pass that stuff in, which looks good so far, we pass it in. Uh, that's good. So, we created it, we passed it in, then we do some stuff, then we're going to come back, and we're going to want to update all the values. But before we update all the values on this screen, let's go ahead and actually update the values that we want to update which is items items th this item right of items of list items we want to update this item of index one ID one so in here we have our fields and then we have our update item button that update item button I'm gonna go over here just uh, my other screen just to pull everything up so we're going to want to create some controllers right away so we're gonna do see here right after that actually after our late keyword there we're gonna want to create our controllers there's a text editing controller item name controller we're gonna call it
we're going to create another one. We're going to call this item description controller. This is why it's so important to be uh, specific with your variable names. Maybe not specific, maybe verbose is the better word. So be as verbose as you can because if you're referencing these in a larger code base, it's pretty self-explanatory. Item name controller, all right, it's the controller associated with item name. Whereas if you name this I1 and then this I2, what's, what does that even mean? How is, how is somebody that's never seen that code base before going to understand what that is? So, want to be verbose with those. Whoops. Okay. And then we're going to do something new. We're going to override a function, kind of like in Java. This function is going to be our init state function, so void init state. If we hover over this, it'll tell us what exactly it does. And we need to add our super call to the original init state. And in here, we want to set the value of our uh, item name controller, of, of our item controllers, essentially, the text controllers associated with each property of item. Notice how we don't update the ID, and that's of course because we don't, we use that ID to identify the object. You never want to update an ID. Think, about, think of it as like a, a SQL ID, actually. So if you have a SQL table and you have some row inside of that ID, inside of that uh, table, you're not going to want to modify the ID and you're not going to be able to, even if you wanted to. In this case, you could if you wanted to, and it would break stuff, which demonstrates exactly why uh, key integrity is so important in any sort of relation or in any sort of relational or non-relational database system. We're going to update the value of the text inside of here. We're just going to set that to item.text or not text, item.name in this case for the item name controller and then the item description controller text of that is going to be set to item.description so now we're going to want to associate those with our text fields here So this is going to be our item name. This is going to be our item name uh, text field, and then this one's this one here is going to be our item description text field. We're going to set the controllers appropriately there, and then we also want to set our decorations. Set this to an input decoration with the label text so that we can so that the user knows what these are because as right now it's just some empty fields that they can enter text into. So let's add some label text here. We're just gonna call this name because that's what we're updating. We're just up to, we're updating the name of the uh, of the item. And then over here we're gonna want to do the same exact thing. There we go. Now, should we should we display the ID or should we not display the ID? That's I guess kind of up to you. I mean, if you if you want to, but it, but if you think about it though, if the user is in this page, and uh, this isn't exactly how it'd be in your application that you're developing. So you're looking at this after you're in industry or and that's that's why I made these videos public of course so that if you ever do need to go and reference these videos again in the future you can they're right here so that you can reference them always uh, so if you are out in industry and you're looking at this this isn't likely what you're what you have you likely have some customer some like uh, some customer info or maybe you have a list of customers and you want to select one of the customers from that list of customers so it's still this I don't want to say it's the same but it's still kind of similar because you have some stuff that you want to modify and it's going to take you to a different page so like let's let's say you have let's see here so you have an Instagram post 
and I'll actually open up Instagram right now just to make sure that everything is accurate. So say you have some Instagram post and in that Instagram post you go click on as of right now top right corner click on the three dots select edit and you can edit some stuff you can edit the description you can edit you can add some tags you can add some text some alt text and stuff like that uh, but if you cancel out of that you're gonna be right back where you were you're gonna be able to see your description that you set and or comment or whatever you want to call it and some of that other information so once we uh, if, if you're inside of that image, so what, what am I getting at? If you're looking at that stuff that you're going to update, the customer, the Instagram post, the uh, Twitter, whatever, or X, whatever, you, you know what I mean? If you're modifying something and you click into it, you're already going to, you should know what you're modifying. So at least the way that I'm kind of writing this logic is we know that, we already know that it's ID 1. So when we click, when we click edit item, we have these other fields that came from here. There's really no chance for ambiguity there but again totally subjective if you want to re-display the item ID or any other additional fields that might be necessary we're not going to update the ID so that's why I don't display it but if you wanted to the option is there to do that so let's see here something else we can do is change your title here for the app bar completely forgot about that And I'm setting it to const because we're not gonna we're not gonna update this. It's not gonna be set to variable. It's gonna be changing throughout the state of the application, so it's gonna be constant. It could do edit item ID whatever page up here. Again, totally subjective if you wanted to. All you'd have to do is this, just a string interpolation. Yeah. Oh. We set that to constant. There we go. Yeah, so you could do that. It's an option too. If you really wanted to, I don't want to. On purpose, I want to have this to just to be constant. So we do this. We have our stuff that came in now. If we modify it, can't do anything because it there's no option to update the item, and frankly, there's no logic to update the item. So if we go back, we're gonna expect it to be the exact same as before. So why don't we implement some of that logic? If we go ahead and create a method here, or function, update item pressed, and it's your function, what it does is it references, it goes and checks for the item, because presumably by the time we got here, it's already been added to that global list of items that we have access to. So what we can do is we can say, uh, let's see here. Sorry about that. I was getting confused a little bit with some logic that I wrote on my other screen. But yeah, I was I was looking for the item that I defined, but that wouldn't make sense because we never defined an item here. At least we never set, we, ne we never uh, hard-coded an item. We passed it in from the other widget. So we're going to go and say item current item because that's what it is. It's the current item that we're working with because as of, this is just this isn't the direct reference to item, it's just an instance of item that exists inside of this page. So to grab the actual item that's stored in the global, again, if that if that didn't make sense, we created a new item here. So this is a new reference. So this is in some memory location, uh, in this case on the computer, but if it was on the device, on the device. And we check to see if it exists, if the ID of this here item that we created, which we initialized to one, it exists inside of this list of items, we're going to add it. But we never change the reference, so there, there's no reference change here. So we're still referencing an item that is, we're, we're referencing a variable that's local to main.dart. So when we pass it over, we're passing it, we're, we're passing the stuff over, but we're not passing the actual reference, the memory location reference. So if we update it over here, it's not going to change back over here because we didn't we don't have access to that it's its scope is this here class so because of that we want to we want to grab the reference the the, the list the item position ID when I say item uh, I'm talking about the item list position ID ID that we set here which is one 
And that's what we want to make changes to because that's what we wrote out to that uh, list that's global. I hope that wasn't too complex there. but So our current item, we're going to set equal to our global items. And we have to add that reference, of course. Whoops. Did I? I did misspell it. There we go. Global items. And then of global items, we want to reference item. <laughs> items. Add the S at the end, it doesn't matter. Okay, we don't want this. We don't want to see that. Dot first where. So we have a couple options here. So I will kind of go into uh, some of the operations. We kind of did with the Dart introduction, but there, there's just so many different, um, there's so many different methods that we can call, and the reason is because it's a list, it's an iterable, it's something that we can iterate through. So we get something that's really, really similar to link, list integrated queries, and uh, link is specific to uh, the whole .NET ecosystem, so C sharp and all that stuff. But so even though this isn't list integrated queries, at least not. The eleven, the eleven herbs and spices, dot net list integrated queries. It's something quite similar to it, where we can go and uh, we can query, quote unquote, this list, kind of a similar way. So, one of the one of those methods that we have access to to go and look through the list is the first where. So, you do want to try and catch this, and in this case, I'm not going to because if I try and catch it. We're going to hide any errors, and I want to show any errors that might show up if they do show up. And that's good to do during the debug process and during the application writing process. However, if this is going out to production, you do not want to do something like this without catching any potential errors, because if this breaks, it breaks the whole entire application. So what I might do as well, actually, is I might show what it looks like when it breaks, because it's not, it's not pleasant for the user. An application crash is never pleasant for the user. Instead of calling this I, I'll just call it index. And it's kind of similar to the uh, this here method, this here function that I called the dot contains. But we don't want the dot contains because the dot contains returns a true or a false. So as the documentation states right there, does it contain this stuff? True, right? Because it, because it's, it it does it does contain that. Uh, does it contain this other stuff that's not in that original list? False. It doesn't contain it. So if it doesn't contain it again, it's it's pretty straightforward. It just returns a true or false. But in this case, we want to actually grab the item inside of the list. So what this will do is if we look here, it'll return the item that we're looking for. First, where item element is or the element is less than five of this list of a couple integers here uh, the first item where the element is less than five is one so that's accurate so kind of a similar deal here except instead of dealing with integers we, although we are dealing with the integers we're dealing with the entire object so index.id is equal to item.id which it should be equal to because we created it inside of our main.dart page and now that we have that reference, or yeah, that, that reference here, because we grabbed it, we grabbed that instance, I shouldn't call it reference, I should call it the instance. We grab that instance of item that we want to modify. We're just gonna go and modify it. So we're gonna say current item dot item controller dot text, sorry, dot name is equal to item controller dot text. Item name controller dot text, sorry. And they are they're the same type so that it's not going to be an issue if you're working on this and you're like hey why can't i assign it why can't i i assign the value of the of a text controller to an integer or to a double it's because you got to parse it you can't just assign a string to a non-string right pretty clear there we're going to set our description There we go. So what are we doing here? We select the item. We, we, we go and make some changes. We go and update the item. 
by clicking on this button. This method should fire off. It won't because we haven't attached it to uh, the unpressed, but it should, quote unquote, once this is done, go into here, grab the item which we added inside of our main.dart page before navigating to this page. Uh, once it does that, uh, we want to assign the new values to that uh, item and then nothing's gonna happen right because as of right now we update the values but we don't actually go back you could always go back through this button but pretend like it doesn't exist for now so what we're gonna want to do is we're just gonna want to pop it from the stack pass it in the context and that should be all with with this function of course now we need to add need to attach it to the on press there okay so at this point what's it gonna do let's kinda look through the logic we're gonna go we're gonna create a new item and when the so the user pre presented the information of the item which we've set here in code if it's the first run it won't exist inside of this list so the users gonna be like oh cool it's got some stuff here I wanna modify one of these items one of these properties though so uh, when they want to modify that, they're going to select edit item. When they select edit item, we're going to navigate into this here function, handle button press. We're going to check to see if it contains that item. And since it doesn't, well, I guess in this case it does because we've already been through this. Um, still added it. Okay. We're not going to worry about that quite yet. I'll look into that a little bit. For now, we're going to keep moving forward. Presumably, it, it does already have that index. Right? Presumably, we already added in this position. Yeah. Oh, well. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next route. So we're going to push that. I'm going to go ahead and continue here. Modify some stuff. Update the item should update it and it does update it cool and yeah that all looks good now so far the other thing that we'd want to do is we want to handle that dot then with the value that comes back and in this case what we would want to do is we'd want to set the current item to uh or not the current item the item that we have referenced here to the updated item which to do that we would just go and say item is equal to global items dot items dot first where gonna be the same thing as what we have in that other page that we were looking through and we might have a little issue here okay there we go that's what we would want to do so yeah, I'll kind of look through the code though here because that was a little unexpected here to see that. Although it does work properly, something's a little off. So I'll look through that here first. Okay, I was just doing a little bit of testing here just to see what exactly was going on here. Uh, because debugging, if I set a breakpoint up here, you can't really can't really see the value of items here. It doesn't really let us see that. So I just looped through it and check to see how many we were printing and we were adding a bunch of items every single time that we'd go back and forth we'd add an item so that was a little that was a little bug with here with the application print the amount of occurrences now it did get fixed there's only one item that we fetched and uh, we don't reassign the values there so I did comment these out we don't reassign the values here nothing is updated which is expected that's what we would want if it wasn't updating the values there 
or if it was updating the values there, that would be a problem. That mean that we're referencing the va we'd be referencing a variable that is outside of the scope of this, which is like, how does that even happen? So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these, and then we'll go through the solution because apparently we'll kind of go through right here. So we go back here. We look in our main.dart page. The problem was with our contains function. So it didn't work exactly as uh, as I wanted it to. So instead of working as a list integrated query where you'd go where you, where you can go and take a value.id variable. So say you have some type T in this case item, which is T, and T dot property name, which property name could be ID. I thought that we could just do that, I guess. It doesn't like that first where we can do that there contains it doesn't work that way not exactly at least so that was a that was the deal so if we go ahead and set a breakpoint in here we shouldn't be hitting this anymore and if we restart give it a little bit of time oh there we go it did restart if we restart we should hop into hop into here because it it shouldn't contain that value so since it doesn't contain it we add it to that list and I guess we don't want to print that element ID in this case but not gonna worry about that for now get rid of a couple values there update the item perfect looks like that got updated so we don't need this as well I suppose that's about it. I mean, that's about it with the application. It's create, read, update, delete. Although not really, there's no creation quite yet. There's reading, there's updating, and there's no deleting yet. Because if we do this, try to update that item. It's just going to set them to empty fields. So, this could be improved a little bit we could add a little bit of input validation because we ideally we wouldn't want the user to have no value in the name field we could do something I'll just play around with it for an hour that we're done because we are at about hour and seven minutes it's not too bad if we go over here before we go and okay we're in the wrong page before we pop that that page and before we go and assign anything here we could check to see if some if the values were even changed so if we could say like if for now I'm just gonna have a placeholder so if the values are changed we do that else just pop so that would work I guess the, not exactly right because we have a true we're never gonna hit this block but if we say if uh, current item or uh, not current item probably want to move this up and we can do a little bit more refactoring like could actually get rid of this here but I'll, I'll wait on that for now just so that you all kinda get an idea of what I'm doing here so we got our item we don't want to reassign anything quite yet so we're gonna get rid of that add this here because this is the block where we where we do want to make the changes so we're gonna go ahead and check if the uh, current item dot name is not equal to item name controller dot text or current item name or current item description not equal to item description controller dot text and yeah, that's I forgot to add that I wonder why it's even letting me check them yeah gives you a message but it right there it should throw it I would want it to throw to give me an error there right like if I if I save this I'm guessing it'll actually run here that's not good 
not something I like about that language. Because right here we would expect it to say, hey, I mean, it, it, and I guess it does here, right? It says, it gives you a little idea of that op, the, uh, right there. So it says here, text editing controller isn't a subtype of the left operand, which is string. But if you're not paying attention, yeah, this could fly by, like a review or anything like that. So want to make sure we add dot text there so that we are comparing the same type. So if they are not equal, we want to go and update them. But if they are equal, well, we just don't want to update anything. And for that refactoring, we can go ahead and get rid of all this here stuff. We don't even need that else block. We can just say, hey, if they're not equal, if one of them isn't equal, then go ahead and update this stuff. And if, um, if they are equal, aka no changes were made, don't even don't even bother why why write out when you can just avoid that read write you'd still do the read but you wouldn't do the write so if we just set a breakpoint in here edit item update item we shouldn't even hit this but we should hit this and clearly we are because we're popping out of that modal I'm trying to think of any other functionality that we would want to add here but it seems pretty complete here pretty straightforward so yeah, covered uh, covered quite a bit of stuff here. Covered the uh, page navigation. Covered passing stuff between pages. There are other ways to do this. This is the way that I'm going to cover. This is the way that I'm going to use. Uh, we might we might use something else later on. I don't know. It depends on convenience. If this keeps being convenient, which it kind of is. I mean, you just define it up here. Add it to your constructor. Uh, add it to your create state function, and then the reference there, which I know sounds a little bit wordy there, but if there's a more convenient solution, I might go ahead and use that other one, but for now, this will work. But, uh, yeah, we covered that. Covered passing stuff between wedge, uh, between um, pages. And we, we covered uh, persistence of some stuff between classes. Of course, not persistence if the device shuts off or anything like that, but a form of persistence we can we could say. So that's about it though. Thanks for watching and let me know if there's any questions.